you have to be part of your community. Like you got to walk the streets, you got to eat in the restaurants, you got to go to the places people may not be comfortable going. When you do that, you have a deeper connection with the community and then you have a better understanding of what your role is as the physician or health professional in this community. We up in a coffee shop here in downtown Sudbury called Cup of Joe's. This coffee shop, I've spent a lot of time working on some of the work that I do for the medical school with the board of directors as the global health coordinator. I spent a lot of time in here also working on some of my projects around social accountability and advocacy work. And what I, what I like about it is it's at the epicenter of our community and it uh, makes me feel connected to the people that walk in through the door of my emergency department that I work in. And I often see those people come here who are who are experiencing homelessness, who are living in poverty, they come through this door too, and this business, this business offers them free coffee, free food, and a place to warm up. It's an inspiring place to be. Who do I actually serve? What are their priority health and social needs? Who do I need to engage with to, to know that I know what those are, that I'm not blinded by my own lived experiences and the social pressures I'm under, that I might not be able to relate to to the people that I'm supposed to help that are walking through my door. I know in the emergency department, you know, we go into emergency medicine because we love acute care. We love saving people's lives. We love intervening in emergencies. But it might blow your mind to know that according to the latest uh, SciHi data, 0.88% of visits to Canadian emergency departments are for CTAS level ones, the most acute that need intervention on immediate arrival. Those are the true, true emergencies you know, if you throw in the next level down, it's about 17% of our visits. So that means anywhere between 99 and 83% and of emergency visits are either non-urgent, urgent, or not urgent whatsoever. So who walks through our door then? So what I see come through our door often is poverty, homelessness, oppression, systemic discrimination, addictions, mental health. And, and they are there waiting for help and they wait long hours for help and if i ascribe to this concept that i'm really just there for emergencies instead of like looking at my community and seeing what i'm really there for like the people that are walking through that door that i might not really understand wh why i'm there like i might not understand what's my role what's my purpose here and if you don't understand what your purpose is you don't understand that context, you're signing yourself up for a career of, of ongoing tension between what you conceptualize your role as and what you actually need it for. We need to kind of take this concept of social accountability and take it to another level. We need to really understand, you know, what are the conditions that need to be met in order for us to truly be socially accountable? Like we talk about community engagement, but how do we teach that to our learners? What's a valid form of community engagement? Is it valid to just go talk to random people in the community and try to understand what's going on when you know that there are disadvantaged, underserved groups that may never have their voices heard? So we have to teach that. We have to teach, um, we have to teach this framework of social accountability as a lens for, for them to look at medicine, look at the world, to look at their future practice. I think we need to train them to be advocates. We need to train them to be in some cases, activists, if the time it calls for it. We need them to train them to have a social conscience. They need to know that they have to be adaptable, flexible to the needs of their community. And uh, they, need to, they need to build those ties to community very early on, early on in that, in that first year. That placement that we do with um, Indigenous cultural immersion I have still to this day never forgotten about my experiences up in Fort Albany. Living through the flooding in a community that cut the indigenous land off from the hospital, from the airport, from the grocery store. Because those were three critical pieces of infrastructure that were built across this causeway that every spring would flood. And all I could think of was, why did they do that? Why did they do that? And why do these people every spring have to deal with that challenge? I met some wonderful people when I was up there, and it really built in this context that um, there are some 
terrible, shameful conditions that we allow to perpetuate there. But I also met a lot of people who demonstrate strength that I've never seen before who can survive in those circumstances. And when we talk about that idea of being socially accountable and accessing that socially constructed knowledge, it's those people that have the solutions to those problems because their lived experiences and the social pressures that they're under. And if you miss, if we don't, if we don't help our students and learners understand that, they, they are always gonna look at things through their lived experiences and their social pressures they're under. And those are vastly different than what it's like living in Fort Albany. A socially accountable physician it would be one who listens to those patients, those people, the community members that tell him, you know, our needs are not being met. This is what we need to have worked on and that they're adaptive, they're flexible. They take that information, they access it, and then they change. They, they transform the local healthcare system to adapt to those needs. You can conceptualize that at the patient interaction level. You can conceptualize that at the community level. You can you can definitely act on that too at a more macro level or a policy level. So really, our graduates are supposed to be MDs, but also social change agents.